I know, I know, another video about AI. You can hardly turn on YouTube anymore without seeing something about ChatGPT or one of the AI platforms. But I thought for this St. Patty's Day and our St. Patty's Day special, I would ask ChatGPT for something that may not have been asked before, and that is, can it write basic programs for the Color Computer 3? We're gonna find out today on Vintage Geek. Just a quick reminder, if you like vintage technology, vintage computers, or any of those discussions, please like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot as we grow our channel. So these days, all of the talk everywhere seems to be about AI. ChatGPT is the topic of so many conversations I can't even keep track. And if you look on YouTube, you can find anything that you want to know about ChatGPT. I'm not here to explain how it works, how it came together, or any of its values, both good or bad. I'm not here to discuss any of that. I wanted to see what ChatGPT can do as far as vintage technology. And what I mean is, if I ask ChatGPT to write me a basic program for one of our vintage systems here at the Vintage Geek Museum, can it write something effectively that could actually make a game, for example, or maybe draw a picture on the screen? I really want to know how far it can go, and that's why I want to give it a try here today on Vintage Geek. I'm just going to have it give me some basic code samples, I'm going to type them in, and we're going to see what uh, kind of output it produces. It could be really fun to find out, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So I'm going to start with something simple. I want to see if I can have ChatGPT write me a program that can put a picture of a leprechaun on the screen. I think it's a good way to uh, start out for St. Patty's Day special. Uh -oh, those kids are after me, Lucky Charlie. Let's go ahead and type in. Now, I understand it's very conversational. I've not used ChatGPT before. I've seen other people use it. So let's uh, start with a simple question. Certainly, here's a simple basic program for the Tandy Color Computer 3 that displays a full color leprechaun on the screen. All right, it's typing some code here. It's doing it pretty fast. I see circles and lines. Oh, it's even gonna explain it. This program uses the screen command to set the display mode to one, and the color command to set the drawing color to a bright green shade. To run the program, simply type it in and press run on the Tandy Color Computer 3. You should see a colorful leprechaun appear on the screen. Let's find out. So I'm gonna start typing in this program here. Looks like in total, this is about 16 lines of code, so it's pretty basic. I'm really curious as to what kind of output this is gonna give us. So the first set of lines, the first 10 lines really are all circles. And we get into the lines. If I'm not mistaken, I think the line commands for the color computer are basically just sets of coordinates, and you're basically just drawing a line between those two coordinates. All right, so this is our full 16-line program that ChatGPT gave us. So let's see what happens when we run this. Do we have a leprechaun? Got a problem in line 20. So line 20 is color 15, 2, 2, which is exactly how ChatGPT wrote it. What if I just put that command in, in general? <coughs> Now, ChatGPT is supposed to be conversational, so in theory, if I go back in and ask it, okay, the color command's not working, I'm getting an FC error, it should give me a conversational response. So now I'm curious as to what it's going to say. I apologize for the error. The color command syntax in Tandy Color Computer 3's basic is slightly different than what I wrote earlier. Here's an updated version of the program that should work without errors. Thanks, ChatGPT. I will try running this program. No, we got a syntax error now. I apologize for the confusion. It appears that the color command syntax I provided earlier is not correct for the Tandy Color Computer 3. Here's an updated version. And now I'm looking at this, they changed the line 20 to be a set color statement, which could be right, but I don't think it's gonna be right to have those H commands in there. I feel like it's gonna have to be either all three digits or they're gonna have to be all hex, but I'll give it a try. Yeah, still getting a syntax error on line 20. <coughs> Oh, well, this is interesting. Now it's trying to use the palette command instead. Now let's try to run it. Well, <laughs> we got something on the screen. I apologize for the continued issues. It appears the BF parameter used in the line command may not be recognized by some versions of the Tandy Color Computer. Here's a modified version. It's cool that it remembers what it's already done and it can kind of take steps accordingly. So I fixed all three of those lines. <laughs> well, we got some interesting circles on the screen. We still have a syntax error, though. Now it's saying, it seems the syntax I used for setting the color palette in the previous version of the program is not compatible with the Color Computer 3. Here's an updated version that should work. Let's just take this part out and see if it'll display anything. So that, that's it. That's, that's all we get. I'm not really sure how that's a leprechaun, chat GPT. <laughs> So far, I'm gonna go ahead and say that AI is a fail. It's not nice to make fun of a leprechaun. Maybe I should try something a little bit more game-oriented and see if it can do something very simple in that regard. Can you write a basic program for the Tandy Color Computer that involves a leprechaun trying to get to the end of the rainbow? Ah, it even gave it a name, Leapin' Leprechaun. Quick, 
Okay now, kids. <laughs> now, it looks like it's setting up some kind of map according to the code. It looks like it may also need the joystick, but let's just see what happens here. Well, we've got a black box on the screen and a syntax error on line 200. <laughs> I have to appreciate the way that it does show everything on screen with ChatGPT, and it's almost like it's thinking as it's going. As I understand it, it's a predictive model, so basically as it's continuing to type, it's anticipating the next word. That's kind of how it works. But so far, that has not panned out too well for the programs for the Color Computer 3 that we're trying today. Two hours later. All right, I've got all the letter keys assigned now. Let's see if this functions any differently. <laughs> Fantastic! I won! I don't know how I won, but apparently I hit some obstacle or perhaps the end of the rainbow that's not actually shown on the screen. This is a very short-lived game. Apparently you just have to uh, make a few moves and then you just win. All right, ChatGPT, all right. You kind of wrote a program and then I had to fix it using other available information on the internet and it still doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Two days later. So I went back to work, did a little bit more research. First I said, maybe ChatGPT can help with something a little simpler. Maybe making a little bit of music to celebrate the holiday, make a little tune. I asked ChatGPT to write me a command that could play some music for St. Patrick's Day, Danny Boy in particular. And uh, it came back with, well, a statement that I was able to put into an emulator, but ultimately did not work out so well. So then I decided, how can I best put something on screen that represents St. Patrick's Day? I didn't have anything in the museum collection that was really on theme, so I got to working with the original Color Computer Extended Basic Guide, and I quickly learned about the graphics modes of the Color Computer and how to set a point on the screen. And I thought, well, that's interesting, but it was gonna take me probably a full week of trying to put things on graph paper and put these pixels where they need to go. Could I use something more modern to actually translate a current piece of clip art to something we could show on the Color Computer 3. I went back to our friend ChatGPT and I thought, let me write a program in Visual Basic, modern Visual Basic, that could run on Windows and take a given bitmap file and convert that into a series of PSET statements for the Color Computer that I could then cut and paste into an emulator and run. And this time, it actually came up with something useful. Granted, it's pretty simple, and I probably could have figured it out by going to one of the many code websites where people share snippets of code. However, it did this very quickly, and I was able to cut and paste it directly into Visual Studio and actually run it with only a few modifications. Upon first run, I was able to make it work successfully. So I went online, I found some simple clip art. I went ahead and did a little bit of modification work in paint. Then I scaled it down to the right resolution, and I ran my handy dandy new little Visual Studio program to convert that bitmap image into code that I could put into the emulator for the Color Computer 3. Thank God that there's a cut and paste function because the actual number of points for this thing ended up in the hundreds of lines of code, and that was after I figured out that I needed to actually put multiple PSET statements on the same line, otherwise the actual emulator or Color Computer would run out of memory entirely even trying to process it. Thanks to the emulator, it is able to actually save files in a waveform already, so I could load it directly onto the laptop and use the cable connector setup we've used in the past to load this into our real color computer 3. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And it did find the file, it's called Leprechaun, although it's not fully spelled because I only had eight characters. There we have it, and our Leprechaun program has loaded into the color computer. So these are what the commands look like. Essentially, it's just a series of PSET commands. I believe there's 10 per line to make it fit in the amount of space required. And this goes on for hundreds of lines of code. So let's run this and see what our simple Leprechaun looks like on screen. I did use the graphics mode that's only two colors because it gave you more pixels and resolution so it looked a little bit better. Let's see what this looks like. It uh, really represents the clip art we chose for it and uh, it drew it very well on screen. One thing that I realized very quickly because I wanted to see if this worked for more than one image, I pulled a more complex image from the internet with a pot of gold and a rainbow and some other accessories and I tried to run it through the same program. However, that didn't work out. I also tried just putting in the Vintage Geek logo to see if that would work, but it didn't because there were just far too many points. The file size became way too large. The system couldn't handle it. It ran out of memory very quickly. So I started thinking, well, there's got to be a more efficient way to draw this 
them to do point by point. Now the color computer has a command called line, which we had actually seen in the ChatGPT examples, even though they weren't using it quite properly. It can literally draw a line from any point to any point, but it can save a lot of lines of code in between. So I changed the program in Visual Studio to instead of mapping the points of the bitmap, it would map the start and end point of any given line in all of the horizontal lines that go across the screen. So this way it cuts down significantly on the amount of code required and allows you to fit more into a smaller amount of space. I went ahead and tried this with the Vintage Geek logo and actually was pleasantly surprised to find out that my line method saved enough space where it was able to work. We've got our Vintage Geek logo program loaded here. So let's uh, see what this looks like on screen. I think it looks great, honestly. Everything translated really well, and the draw time was a little bit faster too, using the line statements as it didn't have to plot every single pixel. The only problem is that when I still tried to do the other St. Patrick's Day themed picture with all of the detail and the pot of gold, there were still too many points. So this works great if you have a lot of condensed graphics. In other words, the VG and the Vintage Geek is all kind of in one spot, so those lines on each row are consolidated. When you have a more complex image with lots of things happening, there's multiple different lines that would appear each row. So when you're trying to create line statements, it becomes very bloated very quickly in code. And again, I ran into an out of memory situation in the emulator when I was trying to put this together. So I had to rethink the code one more time. How can we make this more efficient? Well, the color computer, it turns out, does have a draw function as well. Now the draw function is pretty cool because you can actually give it instructions as it goes. So you can tell it to move to a point, draw for X number of points, move to another point, draw some more. This is a much more efficient way than even using the line statement and for more complex images seems to work better. I went ahead and modified my Visual Studio code to do that and then I ran my St. Patrick's Day picture in it with all of the different things going on and uh, it actually did work. We're going to load that one now. There's St. Patrick. Looks like the picture's all there. It translated pretty well. The draw functions work. Now there are a few pixels missing on this screen, but that's not really the fault of the color computer. When I was trying to downscale this image in Windows Paint, it got a little bit uh, pixelated and actually had a little bit of data loss there as we were trying to get it to the right size. The image is still there and you can tell what everything is. You've got the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and a little sunshine smiling. It's a very jaunty St. Patrick's image and uh, glad that this worked out on the color computer. Now, this is all well and good, of course, but you know, I want more, always. I was trying to figure out how to make this have some color. I found out that in the Color Computer 3, and this is actually really cool for me because I didn't have the 3 when I was a kid, I had the 2. They added some high resolution drawing modes and some high resolution commands that I ended up learning about looking through the reference guide. So I went back and I actually retooled the original Leprechaun drawing using these high resolution drawing commands, put a little bit of color to our Leprechaun, but uh, I was still a little bit disappointed about not having sound for this uh, particular experiment. I'm not a music person necessarily, but thanks to some online resources, I was able to find the note structure for Danny Boy. Now in the case of the color computer, you have to know the notes, you have to know the length of the notes, and you have to know what octave they're in. Ultimately, I was able to get the first couple of bars from Danny Boy to be integrated into the program and into our finished St. Patrick's Day image with full color, well, a few colors anyway. We're gonna load that now and see what the finished product looks like. All right, we've got our final image loaded into the color computer three. But you know, given that it's for St. Patrick's Day and uh, this is our final product, I gotta get into the spirit a little bit. I'm the Leprechaun! Cool it, okay. Don't try and steal me, Patrico! Now I feel like I'm ready to uh, see the Leprechaun on screen and see our finished result. Let's see what this looks and sounds like. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Why, I'm a leprechaun. The high resolution graphics mode also gives you the capability of putting text on screen, which I didn't know about. Another cool little feature with the Color Computer 3. I did have a lot of fun working with this. ChatGPT definitely let me down at the beginning, but I think maybe my expectations were a little bit too high. I don't think it's gonna be writing any color computer programs anytime soon, but it did give me an excuse to learn a lot more about the Color Computer 3 and some of its capabilities. So in that way, I would say that it was kind of a win. And in any case, it definitely made a fun event for St. Patrick's Day 
and I hope that you enjoyed going along for the ride with us. As always, if you like what we're doing here on the channel, please like and subscribe. It's gonna help us as we grow. And if you wanna get some cool merch like the shirt I'm wearing today, which happens to be green in light of St. Patty's Day, be sure to check out the merch store. The link is in the description. We've got all sorts of cool ideas there, shirts, coffee mugs, and more. Until next time, I'm Aaron, and this has been Vintage Geek.